Um, but sometime during that Super Bowl game, yes, it was an awesome game, historic, but it made me sick. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. Through the course of the game, it goes, I'm not feeling good. It was not because I'm a Falcons fan or something like that. I was just like, I'm not feeling good. I'm not feeling worse and worse. And then, uh, unfortunately, um, Anthony was sitting next to me, and I heard you got sick. Uh, then Art was sitting next to me, and he's not here today. He's, he's sick. So just stay away from me, okay? <laughs> just, just stay away from me today. Um, and hopefully you'll stay healthy. But... Um, yeah, I'm, I'm glad God you know, got me through this week, and uh, I don't know, I just, even in the, today's service right now, up to this point, it's really sense with what Dave shared, uh, what Rachel, the music and the words you've been leading us with, uh, God is here, God is present, and he's, he's, got, he's speaking to us already about seeing and experiencing his love and being open to it and, and uh, not missing out, not missing out. So, let me, let me begin with prayer together. Father, thank you so much for you, Lord, for your love uh, that you pour out to us in seen and unseen ways. And today, Lord, uh, we want, we cry out, say, we don't want to miss any of it, Lord. We don't want to miss any of it. We want to experience it. We want to be transformed by it. Uh, we, we want to be children of God who are enamored with you and excited about the journey you take us through. So Lord, uh, take this time you give us now and um, use it for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I'm sure this happened to you before, but I'll ask you the question, have you ever missed a moment because you were distracted? You missed the moment. Maybe it was during that Super Bowl game or some game you were watching and you decided to go to the bathroom or go to the snack table and then suddenly, you know, there's a, this play and everyone's cheering. Go, whoa, whoa, you know, what just happened? You know, I missed that. And, was, you know, thank God for instant replay, right? But there's times in life those things happen. There's no instant replay. It, it happened to me once. I was with a group of friends and uh, we were just sitting around, and one of our friends was talking and talking, and then um, the person sitting next to me just tapped me and pointed me to uh, my attention to some piece of furniture in the room. And as I was looking away, going, you know, what is this piece of, you know, what is going on? And suddenly, the friend who was talking just shouts out, I'm engaged! I'm going, what? What, what just happened? <laughs> you know, I was like... Where did that come from? I missed it. I, I missed a moment. Has that ever happened to you? Like you were just distracting, and then you, you lost a significant moment. You said, I can't take it back. There was no instant replay. Or um, have you ever longed for something so much more that you don't realize what you have already right in front of you? You long for something else and you're working at it and you don't realize that you have something really precious right in front of you and you're missing it. That happened to me uh, years ago when I first born, uh, Janine was um, just around a year old. I started my first ministry out of seminary when she was around seven months old and you know it was my first ministry and I wanted to do a really good job and I wanted to be faithful to the church that called me so uh, I was out you know meeting and working and then Bible studies and you know practically most evenings of the week I was out but one evening I came home from um, a church meeting or event or something like that. And Ruth was home with Janine, and Janine was by that time a little over a year old. And Janine was standing by Ruth's, um, uh, Ruth was saying that Janine was standing by Ruth. And when I came home into the living room, Ruth said, look, daddy's home, go, go to daddy. And my daughter just stood there staring at me like I was some stranger, and she didn't move. She just looked at me with these wide eyes, and that was a moment that changed my life. I realized, oh man, what am I doing? What am I doing running around? My daughter doesn't even recognize me. 
You know, we could be so busy chasing after so many things and never seeing the precious treasures that we already have. And that's so true also, as we talked a little bit about, uh, Rachel, about like the first song about breaking down, bring down that wall. That we could say, where, where is God? You know, God, I, I don't understand what you're doing. I don't see anything happening. And we don't realize he is here already. He is at work. He is doing these great, marvelous, miraculous things and blessing us with so many blessings. We miss it because our eyes are in somewhere else. We're too distracted. We're too busy. We're too focused on other things than that which God wants us to be focused on. Romans 8.28 is a verse I want us to focus on today. The reason I'm going through Romans is because I don't want you to miss out. I don't want to miss you to miss out on God's glorious love, as God's glorious plan for you, for this world, for everything that's going on. And we need a scripture because when we just look at the events of our world, the events of our life, the circumstances that we're in, sometimes, many times, we won't see it, right? But we need the scripture to bring us, you know, take the, take the haze out of our life and see the reality. And here is a passage that we need to know, we need to, to memorize, uh, Romans 8.28. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Thanks, Joe. Hey, let's, let's read that out loud again with you, okay? And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. That verse doesn't say in some things, in most things, or in 90% or 99% of things. What does he say? It says that in all things, right? In all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purposes. And there's three things that I want to point out today that we can learn from that's really important. The first is that every detail of your life, every detail of your life has the potential to contribute to your good. Every detail of your life has the potential to contribute to your good. Yes, even some missed flight, travel delay, some accident, things that are planned, things that are unplanned. Things that are challenges and things that are easy, uh, triumphs, tragedies, strengths and weaknesses, uh, achievements, disappointments, whatever has happened in your life and it's going to happen in your life. This verse is telling us that it has the potential to contribute to your good because the second important truth here is God is at work at every moment, every moment, making all of that work for good. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? It's not some impersonal karma. You know, you hear some people say, oh, it's all good, it's all good, it's all work out good. And, and, um, and that's, you know, a lot of times just good sentiment from people. But for someone who knows Christ, someone who follows Christ, who loves God, that's not just a mere sentiment. That's not just wishful thinking, okay? That's just not hopeful pipe dreams. That's a promise. It's a guarantee here that God is proactively orchestrating every nuance of your life. Even here this morning, you're here not by accident, but by purpose, by God's purpose. Because he's working out everything you do, if you love him, for your good. Your good. And sometimes I tell you, I, I, I can tell you myself, it's hard to see, isn't it? He says, this doesn't make sense, God. It doesn't, um, it doesn't fit in what my, uh, my concept is good. If this is good, I, I maybe I want bad, you know, Lord. Um, but this is where our faith comes in. This is where our faith comes. Do we trust the word of God or do we trust circumstances? I choose 
Trust the word of God. Ashley Smith was a 26-year-old single mom, waitress, and widow. Um, and on top of that, she was a drug addict. Her husband was stabbed to death by a drug dealer four years prior, leaving her with a, a five-year-old daughter. But she didn't have her daughter with her. Because of her drug addiction, she was institutionalized, uh, and her aunt had custody of her daughter. You think, well, that's pretty bad. A widow, 26-year-old, waitress, single mom. It gets worse. Because as she was coming home in the middle of the night from getting a pack of cigarettes at 2 o'clock in the morning on March 11, 2005, as she was coming back into her apartment, a man accosted her with a gun and forced her w his way in with her into her apartment. That man, just the previous day, had killed a judge, a court reporter, and two law enforcement officers. He just had killed four people. Now she was being held captive by him at 2 o'clock in the morning for seven hours. Can't think of much worse happening to someone, can you? Well, that, that man that um, was accused of rape and now of, mur of murder, his name was Brian Nichols. And um, something happened between her and Brian Nichols in those seven hours. And you can say, and you know it's a total God thing. God was working in two powerful ways. One, in the midst of all this, Brian Nichols asked her if she had, if she had any drugs. And because she was an addict, she had some meth in her apartment. And he gave, she gave it to him. And he took the, that meth, and then he said, you take some. And in that moment, something changed in Ashley Smith's life. She refused. She refused to t sniff the meth. She, she just later on explained that there was a moment here that she said, I cannot go back to the lifestyle that she has had all those years, even if it would kill her. And the also awesome thing that God was doing, unknown to her until perhaps now, was that around a month and a half back, she stepped into a church for the very first time in years because she was searching for help. She wanted to kick her addiction, but she needed help. And that day at that church, they were passing out copies of the book, The Purpose Driven Life. And it resonated with her because she was trying to find a purpose in her life, and she picked up that book, and she took it home and began to read it. And she was on chapter 32, third, the second day of reading this book, when Brian Nichols broke into her apartment. And while they were just sitting around talking and she tried to engage in conversation with Brian Nichols, she said, can I read? And Brian Nichols said, yes, but you have to read it out loud to me. So she started reading The Purpose Driven Life, chapter 32, to him. And something started changing. Joe, could you read, can you, um, can you um, play that video, please? This is in her own words. She was doing an interview with Megyn Kelly. Wow. Amazing story, huh? The power of God. The work of God. In ways we can't even imagine. The way we can ex explain. You know, after watching this, I ask you, now if... God could work in all things for the good of those who love him in that kind of situation, in her situation. Could he not do the same in any of your situations? Can he? Absolutely. Absolutely.
I mean, that's the ex most extreme. I hope that none of us will ever get to any of that kind of extreme. But in any situation, God can and God does work in these powerful, wonderful ways. Because he loves you. He loves all of us. So many times now, look at our life. What do we complain about? After hearing this, oh, I don't have anything to complain about. But we complain about things. We complain about a delay, a broken appliance, a person in our workplace, uh, a situation, this and that. And they get us down and we think, and we pray about them, and then we think nothing happens, therefore God's not here. God's not listening. But I want to tell you what Romans 8.28, another way of saying it is that nothing, nothing that happens in your life is by coincidence. It was not by coincidence that Ashley Smith encountered Brian Nichols. It was not by a coincidence or accident only that she had that book, Purpose Driven Life. It was not even by accident or by her fault or that it was by accident that she was a drug addict and recovering. It was all part of God's wonderful way of planning, working things out. Even for me to show you this video, I want to tell you, it's, it wasn't God's plan for me to get sick, okay? It was God's plan for me to get sick, to be just struggling in my sermon preparation and being delayed and everything, that I needed to take a break yesterday. It was also God's plan for you that he gave my wife this insatiable desire and appetite for movies based on real stories, real true life stories. <laughs> so she found this movie about Ashley Smith, and, uh, and she was watching it on Amazon Prime when I went out to take a break. And normally I take a break, I uh, get something to drink, and I go back into, into my study, but it's like, Oh, I'm so worn out and falling asleep. I'm so tired. I'll just say, I'll just watch this movie with my wife. And by those circumstances, um, I remember this story. I, saw, I watched the movie and found this in this, these videos in the story that I was like, man, I just happened to be preaching on this verse. It fits perfectly. See? It was not by accident. It was not by chance. And it's not by accident or by chance, but by pr on purpose that you're here today. You're here today listening to this message. And then knowing there must be some circumstance, some situation in your life that God wants you to know with certainty, with assurance, that he is at work in a powerful way in all the circumstances and the minutiae of your life, there's something great, there's something fantastic that he is working out in your life. But there's an important caveat here in this passage. Because it doesn't say that God is working out in all things, working for the good of everyone. But a certain kind of people, right? For those who love him and are called according to his purposes. The caveat is that this guarantee is only for those who love God and are called according to his purposes. And what is that purpose? On verse 29 explains, for those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of the Son so that he might be firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And all that is saying is God's purpose. He was called according to we're called according to his purpose so that we will become like him, like Christ, conformed to his, to, to his likeness. And so in that way, we are like baby brothers, baby sisters of Jesus. You look at that interview, and I, I, she did interviews with ABC and NBC and all the major networks, and she gave the same story. And she had that same persona of a remarkable young lady who, despite being a drug addict, despite being the tragedy of a husband who was killed, despite being a single mom, despite being in this 
torturous experience. There was a calm, there was a peacefulness, there was a, there was a tranquility in their spirit. Do you, you sense that? There's this wholeness, there's this Christ-likeness that she has. And it has come, no doubt, through the experiences, through the, even the ordeals that God has put into her life. But she couldn't have done it if she loved the drugs more than she loved God, right? She couldn't have become that way if she didn't desire God's purpose in her life more than her own purposes. See, there was a door that she opened, a door to Christ, a, bro- a breaking down that wall that she made by making those two important decisions in her life. It says, I'm going to follow Christ and his purposes, but not others. I'm going to love God more than the drugs that I've been taking. So I want to ask you and leave you with a challenge this morning. Do you love God? Do you really, really love God? Do you love him more than the other interests and passions in your life? Do you love him enough that you'll lay down your life for him. Love him enough to lay down, perhaps, if he calls you to lay down your career or your money or your family or your time. Whatever it is, says, do you love me more? He's asking you. Do you love God? And secondly, is it your purpose Is it your purpose to glorify him, to become like Christ as he has called you to, as he has purposed, as he predestined you to become like him? Do the purposes of God in your life take resounding greater priority than anything else that you desire, any other goal, any other desire for comfort or acceptance? or enjoyment. This morning, I challenge you. I challenge you to commit to loving God more and more. Don't be content with where you are. Take that next step. More devoted to anything than anything else. And secondly, to commit to becoming more like Christ, more like him in your love, more like him in his his righteousness, more like him in his holiness. Let's pray.